Hey, how are you? And welcome to the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. We're back after a two-week hiatus. Hope let us uh, be the last to wish you a happy belated Thanksgiving and the first to wish you a happy uh, Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas. We're really early on that. But yeah, I was going to say, we just started. <laughs> we just, music, <laughs> hey, I think they're putting up the tree here in New York City. Anyway, folks, this is not Iron Eagle, I promise. Uh, he's out doing his other job. He's calling Nets game tonight, so we wish him the best. We've got a special guest, Trev Albert, CSTV's very own. Folks, he's been doing three games in four days, and he still makes time to join us here on the Power Performances. We're very happy to have you here in New York City, Trevor. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here and a real honor to be with such talented people here at CBSSportsLine.com. <laughs> yeah, well, the talent comes from behind the scenes. You can't see them on your computer, <laughs> folks, but they're back there right now. And uh, we got some good stuff going on back there. Anyway, we've got good stuff coming up on the show. Don't forget, you can always get your calls in 646-CBS-1000, 646-227-1000. And, of course, emails. That's coming your way as well. Right below us here, you can uh, email us your questions, talk about our power performances, something you want to talk about. And, of course, Tim Brando will be on the show a little bit later. We're going to talk college football. That's your alley. That's my alley. That's his alley. We're going to have a great time on that. And, of course, don't forget, the first two callers on today's show, they're going to get a $50 gift certificate to CBS Sports Store. That's uh, CBSSportsStore.com. There's best in NFL, best in college football, all kinds of uh, gear, merchandise, especially with the holiday season coming up. Uh, you can go on to cbssportsstore.com and get whatever you need. All right, folks, here's what's coming on the table today on the uh, power performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. You see it right there. We're going to talk about the Trojan Terror and along those lines, the Titan Stump. We'll also get to a couple of rookies. Oklahoma, the Sooner Surge, and they have been tremendous of late. Of course, that hurts Trev, who is a Nebraska alum. A and then, of course, we're going to talk about a special college basketball power perspective, something that you haven't seen in a long time in college basketball. We'll get to that in a little bit. But, Trev, why don't you start us off here with uh, the first power performance of the day? Well, I'll tell you what, Jason, one of the most dominating performances in all of college football happened this last week when USC, playing the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, absolutely dominated the Irish 44 to 24, they go to 10 and 1 on the year. They are now number two in the BCS. John David Booty had 265 yards passing in that game. A completely dominant performance. This is a team now, again, still has to play interstate rival there, UCLA, a team that is playing better. They're 6 and 5, but that's the only thing that stands in the way of USC playing Ohio State in Glendale for the national championship. And Jason, the question is, is they the, are they the right team? Is USC the right team to be playing for the national championship against Ohio you State? You and I were talking about this before the show, and, and, and I have no problem with USC being number two. And, you know, people talk about, especially SEC country, and it's completely understandable. Florida has one loss. They had a much tougher conference schedule in the SEC, and that one loss came to an Auburn team who was top ten all season long, now with two losses uh, just out of the top ten. But my problem is this. USC knew that its conference schedule wasn't as tough as an SEC. They went out and made sure that they made the rest of their schedule tough. They played Arkansas, and they dominated Arkansas. Now, granted, if they played again, the game would be a lot closer because Arkansas is a lot better right, than they were first right. game of the season. They played Nebraska. Nebraska is in the Big 12 championship game. And then they played Notre Dame. And they dominated all three of those games. I have no problem with USC being number two. I have no problem at all. Matter of fact, I'd have a problem if Michigan was number two. I would Because too. we keep talking in college football how important it is that the regular season matter. The regular season must mean something. Well, in the regular season, Ohio State played Michigan, and they beat Michigan. Michigan played awfully well. But you have a USC team with guys like Dwayne Jarrett, who yep. now, after being healthy, so motivated, not on the list to the Blitnikoff Award finalist, those three. I think he's out to prove to the nation that he is indeed one of the best wide receivers in all of college football. I think it sets up as a terrific national championship game. Yeah, and we'll have to wait till January 8th, unfortunately, to see if it happens. Sad. And USC has to be careful of UCLA because the Bruins have lost six straight to USC, so they have a chip on their shoulder. All right, how about a team that has had a chip on its shoulder all season? They have dealt with adversity. Oklahoma Sooner... Well, folks, the Sooners have been stampeding through the Big 12 since their loss to Texas. Seven straight wins, 6-0 and since they lost Adrian Peterson. Now, obviously, they beat Oklahoma State in the uh, Bedlam rivalry this, this past weekend, but that's not the power performance here. The power performance is the job of Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners since losing Adrian Peterson. Let's just go back a little bit. Five months ago, Rhett Bomar was the quarterback. Kicked off the team along with one of their starting offensive linemen for taking uh, extra benefits from a car dealership. Then, the fiasco at Oregon. 
They should have won the game. They did win the game. The replay officials blew an onside kick, giving Oregon the victory. Right. Then they lose Adrian Peterson. Yet they come back, and they are the representatives of the Big 12 South. This team, had it not been for that botched call in Oregon, would we have an argument for the national championship game, not just a BCS game? Well, I think they would have an argument. I have to understand also that the Big 12, in my opinion, is really having a down year. Yes, it I mean, is. I think the Big 12 from top to bottom isn't very good. There's only one team in the top 15 right now in terms of the ranking, and obviously <laughs> it's, it's the Oklahoma Sooners. But you mentioned the job, and I think right here you can see Allen, Patrick, Chris Brown, two running backs that sort of came in. Bob Stoops has publicly said this is probably – you know, the best year he's ever had as a coach. He feels the best about his job. And I think this is the best job that Bob Stoops has ever done as a coach for the reason that you mentioned. It's so easy to lose a team. You have a quarterback in Paul Thompson who is playing wide receiver who's now your starting quarterback. He's not, let me tell you, he's not John David Booty. I understand that. But the point is this. He has gotten better every single week. And you judge coaches and you judge talent by how they progress through the season. Oklahoma today is a completely different team than Oklahoma was in yep. week two. And that's notwithstanding all the losses that they've had. So that's what I think is remarkable and, about and, Bob and one And one quick point on that. Paul Thompson is the 23rd best passing efficient quarterback yep. in college football. He isn't turning the ball over. And that's huge for a team that doesn't have a star running back. Real quick, let's give some plug to the offensive linemen, and then we'll uh, move on here. But Chris Messner, the only senior on the team, moved from right tackle to left tackle to help them out. They've got George Robinson, John Cooper, Brandon Walker, and Trent Williams, a true freshman. One senior, three sophomores, one freshman, opening the holes and protecting Paul Thompson. That's why they're 10-2. Yeah, and, de and defensively, they've gotten a lot better as well. Brett Venable's doing a pretty nice job there. Well, how about another performance? And I, I actually was there. I witnessed it, and it wasn't far from college. Remember back in the Rose Bowl when Vince Young was running all over USC? Well, he did it again, this time as a Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans were 3-7 and seven going into last week's game at home against the New York football Giants. I'm standing there in the booth watching that game. It's 20 21 to 3. It's the end of the third quarter, and Vince Young scrambles and gets a late hit penalty on the New York Giant defender. And Vince Young got up and started pounding his chance, and I said, uh oh, yeah. <laughs> number 10 is about to take over. And you know what, Jason? He took over that football game, literally, and throwing, running. He was 24 of 35, 250 yards. He ran for 70 yards, had three touchdowns, and single handedly took over this game. That's Bo Scaife, his tight end. He caught a touchdown pass from Vince Young. It was an unbelievable performance, and I literally thought I was watching a Rose Bowl all over again. It was clearly his signature game so far as a pro. Yeah, and everyone wants to talk. Let's go back a little bit here as well, because I speak with Charlie Casserly, who was the GM of the Houston Texans uh, when they drafted Mario Williams instead of Reggie Bush, instead of Vince Young, instead of Matt Leiner, instead of all those guys. And, and he said that a lot of people weren't high on Vince Young because of his intelligence. Remember that test he took right. and everybody said he failed. I don't care about that test, folks. <laughs> He's 4-4 four and four as a starter, and he had a 24-20, 24-nothing uh, last 9.35 of that game. And uh, it, he had six comebacks at Texas. He's now on his way uh, comeback-wise in the NFL. I don't care what he did on a test. I care what he does in the football field and how he is as a leader. And you can clearly see on that team, that's a very young team, because of salary cap problems and all this stuff. He is the leader of that team. And uh, Vince Young, definitely one of the best power performances of the week. All right, how about another rookie, folks, that, uh, you know, one of the guys that you don't think about, at least coming into the season, is making the big impact. Because you had Matt Liner, you had Reggie Bush, Mario Williams. You talk about Vince Young. How about Joseph Adai? Mm. Towards the end of the first round. And let me throw these names out there in, in uh, Colts franchise history. Lenny Moore, 1956. He had 185 pretty yards in a rookie. Yeah, pretty good player. <laughs> Pro Football Hall of Fame. Alan Amici, you may remember him from the uh, best football game ever, the 1958 uh, NFL Championship. He had 194 yards in his rookie year in one game. He obviously, uh, not in the Hall of Fame, he retired pretty early. But Joseph Adai, third highest rushing total in Colts history with 171 against the Philadelphia Eagles Swiss cheese defense on uh, Sunday night. Those two guys, something they had in common, they both won Rookie of the Year. Joseph Adai, we may be seeing that as well. It may be tough, though, with Marcus Colson, the way he's been playing. Right. Joseph Adai, I would like to say this. I agree with you. He's a terrifically talented player. Let's remember this as well, though. Peyton Manning happens <laughs> to be the quarterback there. And, and let's understand the fact that if you're a defensive player, the number one thing you need to take away or worry about is Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, and trying to deal with this man right here in Peyton Manning. So Joseph Adai is benefiting from that. Understand also, Gene Healy is the running backs coach in the Indianapolis Colts. 
He also happens to have been there for the last 10 years. Guess who the last three running backs were in the Indianapolis Colts? You want me to guess? Marshall Falk. Oh, okay, you well, go. I'll help you. Marshall <laughs> Falk, Edgerrin James, and now Joseph Adai. Okay? You have a coach who's been there who understands how to make good players great players. And Joseph Adai is becoming a great player and a complete back. Start of the season, didn't understand blitz pickup, now understands it. His natural ability as a runner is unquestioned. Right. He is now a complete back and a great performance. And his other ability is a receiver because yes. the guy – you know, it's important in that offense to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield, and yeah. he's doing that. Yeah. How about another performance? Tony Romo of the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Great They're... steaks, by the way. Great ribs. <laughs> Great ribs at Romo, huh? So. Look, uh, takes over the reins of the Dallas Cowboys, a team that had, a, you know, was down two games in the NFC East to the, uh, the Giants, and suddenly with Tony Romo taking over, he's completed 69% of his passes, over 1,600 yards. 13 touchdowns and only five interceptions. In 2003, he was an undrafted rookie free agent. Nobody even wanted to draft the guy. <laughs> Plays with an awful lot of confidence and unbelievable performance there on Thanksgiving Day. And by the way, he's the highest rated quarterback in the league right now. He's an avid golfer. And you know what? This just out rumored to have a relationship with Jessica Simpson. So way to go, Tony. Yeah, I knew you'd come up with that. And it's not bad for a kid from Burlington, Wisconsin. And nothing against Burlington, Wisconsin. I've never been there. But Me the neither. population is 11,000. And, folks, the mo thing it's most known for, there's a national UFO center there. So I bet when he's growing up, when he, when he was growing up as a kid, I can't imagine he was thinking he's going to date Jessica Simpson. No. Having said that, when you're the starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, talk to Troy Aikman about that. You're going to get as much publicity as you want. You can date whoever you want. That's right. And, uh, you know, speaking of that, Jessica Simpson's latest commercial where she's kicking people around. I think yeah. Tony likes that a little uh, bit. I think he likes that a little bit. <laughs> but he's 4-1 and one as a starter. And here, here's the deal, too. Here's a young man who makes quick, quick decisions. And so many times you look at quarterbacks. You know, Drew Bledsoe was the quarterback there, and he took sack after sack. He'd go yeah. back to pass. And the difference with this kid is he seems to have such a confidence. People, people actually complain that maybe he's too cocky for this offense, but I, I, don't, I don't buy it. I think he believes in his abilities, and he goes in, and he makes a quick decision. He delivers the ball. He's accurate. And I'm telling you right now, the Dallas Cowboys might be the favorite in the NFC. They're playing that well with him at yeah, quarterback. It's a lot more important how you play in November and December than yeah. it is how you play in September and October. And the other part about that is uh, with Tony Romo, you said he's got a little bit of cockiness. You need some. When you're playing with T.O., uh, you, you yeah. have to have a little bit of cockiness or you're going to get thrown out of the huddle. And look, so, you've got cockiness. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're, he's on set for like 20 minutes. We already got this. All right, folks, let's move on a little bit here. And we're going to switch it up, go away from football a little bit because in case you haven't noticed, the NBA is in full gear. About a month old and, well, Carmelo Anthony has been the best player, at least scoring-wise, in the NBA this season. The leading scorer in the NBA. He had another 37-point performance last night. It was the Nuggets' first loss in uh, five games. They had won five straight, first loss in six games. But let's talk about Carmelo Anthony here because he is the face of the Nuggets. And he gets lumped in the class with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and if you want to throw in Darko Milicic in there as well. But <laughs> uh, he's lumped into that class and he is taking himself from the middle of it up to the top. Now, obviously, Dwayne Wayne has a title and Carmelo Anthony doesn't, but let's right. talk about this year. Ten of the first 13 games, he has at least 30 points. The only game this season he did not have t at least 28 was the first game where he was tossed for arguing a foul. So Carmelo Anthony is the undoubted leader of this team. The one thing he has to be careful of, though, is the fact that he turns the ball over a lot. He's tied with Dwayne Wade for most turnovers a game. And I was reading somewhere about Carmelo. Do you think this could be his rookie year? Yeah. I mean, think about it. If he would have stayed at Syracuse all those years, maybe won two and three national championships for Coach Beheim. But here he is in his fourth year in the NBA. And I think George Carl has had a terrific impact on him. Nobody could question the natural ability of Carmelo Anthony. No, but he made him a complete player. He made him understand how to get his teammates involved. And how about this? The extension, five years, $79 million. You've seen guys go both ways. Guys who've then taken on the leadership role, became the captain of the team, or other guys who said, oh, yeah, by 79 million, time to sit back. Carmelo has gotten better, and I think a lot of it has to do with George Carl and his coaching style and how he's helped him mature from not just a great individual talent, but now a great team leader. Yeah, he's been a tremendous, tremendous leader. And uh, Carmelo Anthony, I got to play basketball with him after he won the national championship. So I like to say that I pushed him to go to the NBA. <laughs> Little two-on-one. -on -one. Let me tell you, I didn't get, he was to take, scared of you, let me tell you, I didn't get to take the shot. It was me passing to Carmelo. Oh, okay. Folks, <laughs> that's our six power performances. We want to hear what you have to say about them. 646-CBS-1000, 646-227-1000, and keep the emails coming. They've been flooding in so far all afternoon. We'll get to those a little bit later. And on the other side of this break, we're going to talk to Tim Brando about what else? 
college football. Stay around here on the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. Maybe we'll get Trev to come out of his shell a little bit, folks. You're watching here on CBS Sports Line. <laughs>